Behind me, testimony to the athletic excellence of the 1936 Olympic Games and to the success of the United States men. Led by Jesse Owens, arguably the best athlete in the history of the sport, the American men captured 12 of the 23 gold medals. I think those were the glory days of American track and field, a time when track and field was a major sport, just about the equal of football or baseball. Now, American track plays largely before empty stadiums and wonders where its heroes have gone. As the world record holder in the 110-meter hurdles and a two-time winner of the Olympics, Roger Kingdom should be basking in the glory of public adoration. Instead, he trains and competes in relative obscurity in a country that shows little appreciation for his place in sports history. Well, you know, it is frustrating at times um, when you arrive back home in your, um, your native land and you go to various places and not recognized. And also when you do tell people what you do and who you are and uh, what sport you participate in, it's like, oh, okay. It wasn't always that way. In their day, sprinter Jesse Owens, miler Glenn Cunningham, and sprinters Wilma Rudolph and Bob Hayes were major figures in American sports and track and field athletes were the frequent subjects of magazine covers. Recently, however, track's moments in the spotlight have been all too infrequent, and the front page stories and magazine covers have just as often damaged the sport as created new heroes. The urine sample of Ben Johnson, Canada. Athletics, 100 meter. Collected on Saturday, 24 September, 1988 was found to contain the metabolites of a banned substance, namely stanozolol. It's an anabolic steroid. Before Seoul, much of the public saw track athletes as hardworking followers of the Olympic ideal. After Seoul, they were all stigmatized by Ben Johnson's shame. I think in a lot of cases it gave people an excuse to say, oh, well, track's just full of drugs and all of a sudden they didn't focus on other sports because I hear that all the time. Our oh, track can't get sponsors because, it, because it, there's so many drugs in it. I think the impact seems to have been to cast a, a suspicion on the sport as a whole, not just on Ben. Um, any phenomenal time, mark, distance since then is, you know, the question always seems to come up. Um, was that a tainted a tainted effort by the athletes. In an effort to clean up their sport and improve track's image, athletes led by Edwin Moses created a groundbreaking out-of-competition drug testing program. But when track's governing body, TAC, failed to follow the rules and let off some drug offenders, Moses and others resigned their positions and challenged tax ruling structure. I don't even want to characterize it as a misunderstanding. It's, it's a child telling a parent that you're, you're not with it, dad or mom you're really not staying with it on the cutting edge. TAC may defend its position, but with the advent of legalized appearance and prize money, the only thing amateur about American track and field is its organization. With colleges dropping their track programs, major meets losing their sponsors, and small crowds at the national championships, it's apparent that the sport lacks a vision of its present and future. The question you have to ask is, track better now than it was 10 years ago when TAC was created by the Amateur Sports Act? And uh, the answer to that question is probably not. Though track and field has a longer tradition than any other sport, it has been out-marketed and out-promoted by the NBA, which used sophisticated marketing techniques to rebound from the doldrums of the 1970s. Professional wrestling has stars that have become household names. And even monster truck races have been playing to full houses while track plays to empty seats. What's behind TRAC's marketing difficulties? In a recent Wall Street Journal article, TAC executive director, Olin Castle, was quoted as questioning whether TAC should even be involved in marketing and promotion. Whatever the reasons, the result has been a shortage of crowd-pleasing matchups and a generation of disappointed spectators, sponsors, and television executives. The really big races always seem to happen in Europe. So as American track and field undergoes a period of painful self-analysis, its athletes struggle to take the sport back to center stage. They're the ones shouldering the burden of returning track to the public spotlight. Every season I feel that I'm on a mission to try to, um, speaking bias, is to put the 110 hurdles, the number one event, the featured event 
and also from doing that, bring the other guys in the 110 I hurdles up with me. And I think with all the personality, starting with the 110 I hurdles, we can make track and field as a whole with all the other events grow. And um, I think that's the key target. TAC Executive Director Olin Castle declined comments. So, Craig, what are some solutions? Well, the drug testing needs to be done by an independent organization outside of TAC. Plus, TAC needs to take its proposed reorganization seriously. Marketing and promotion need to become the number one priority.